This is the, uh, okay. Let me read that into record first. <clears throat> you can, you can go. Uh, all right. We still need you to come back though. All right. Uh, moving on, we're in old business now. Um, item number nine is 300 Flatbush Avenue. It's a site plan slash special permit to create 66 residential units. Section block and lot is 48.74-3-14.100, zone R6, ward six, Rupco Incorporated is the applicant owner. Okay, we have Scott Dutton, Dennis Larios, and Mike Moriello here. We also have uh, Chuck Snyder and Kevin O'Connor. Are we throwing in Guy on this thing too? Guy Thomas Kemp, how you doing? All right. Welcome, gentlemen. Um, okay, so there's, we got some revisions that we want to discuss? Yeah, um, short and sweet, and as a result of, I, I thought I could. Before I go, um, we're gonna, Matt, Matt Gillis is recusing himself because he has prior dealings with Rupco. So Bridget, you will be coming in to play on this, or you're gonna be um, in on this. So, sorry, Dennis, go ahead. Oh, that's okay, All right. um, thank you. Uh, last meeting, uh, I thought there was a good discussion of uh, how to make the site plan better um, from the original submission. Um, and a lot of that had to do with uh, adding walking paths and reducing paved areas in parking spaces. Um, Scott has just passed around some colorized versions of uh, one is a full scale of the property and the other is a, a blow up of the, uh, the project area in front um, by the existing buildings and the proposed new buildings, which illustrate in color, um, colorized version, um, what we're proposing to do um, or ask you to consider, I should say. Um, it was discussed at last meeting um, about the cemetery. Uh, we did forward a PDF copy of the survey um, I have four of these to pass around, but the little yellow box in, in the corner of the property is where the city engineer in 1954 mapped the uh, cemetery at the time the property was conveyed to the county. So um, the PDF copy is in the record. I guess it was circulated to board members. But if you need a full size, it's a large survey drawing because it's near nearly 15 acres. But you know there. There was a reference found to that burial area in that corner of the property, which is yes. as far remote from where we're proposing to build as uh, we could be. Um, and, uh, and Dennis, I believe that was verified by Joe Diamond, if I'm correct. Yeah, Joe, Joe Diamond was uh, Joe Diamond. Dr. Diamond was hired hired to do a report. Um, he was able to. Um, found the map too with that uh, Dennis knew about too, 1956 map I believe, which indicated that area. Joe, like Chriselle, went down to the site, but no monumentation or anything like that that they, that they found. Okay. So what we, what we have here, what you see in colorized version, I'll just lay out in a little more detail on a larger drawing. But essentially, uh, we've created, proposing a walkway, an accessible route walkway, which means fully ADA compliant walkway between the two main buildings on the property. No, it might, Dennis, it might be easier for you. Okay, so that, that route is here. I didn't bring my pointer tonight. So that's been added to the plan for your consideration. 
Um, we discussed, and I think we had it on a schematic level last meeting, uh, adding more walkways. Uh, some of it was requested by the county planning board. And uh, also, the owner has looked at this, the applicant, I should say, and um, decided that more walk paths on the property uh, in, the, in the area of the building development uh, would be beneficial to the project and to the residents of the project. So that's been added. Okay, what has been deleted or proposed to be deleted is uh, approximately 30 parking spaces uh, from the original plan. Those were in the, uh, what we consider the most sensitive areas to build, which would be over here towards uh, the Sudlow residence, where a major parking lot was proposed that required a retaining wall. Uh, we did leave some parking around the back of the building, but we didn't put the big extended lot there either. We're, we're proposing to remove that, and we're proposing to remove the lot that was proposed at the, uh, at the entrance, the lower level entrance, I should say, to uh, in the vicinity of the proposed new building. Okay, and then we're proposing to maintain some existing spaces here that already exist that serve uh, serve the county building when it was a, a county office building. Uh, that was visitor parking for, uh, and then these these spaces are actually where there's pavement already and where there's a loop, a travel loop that's being eliminated, um, but some parking is being maintained in that area. All of this also reduces the level of increase of impervious surface on the site from uh, about five or six tenths of an acre down to two tenths of an acre. Most of the development is proposed now uh, really in areas where there's existing parking lots that the county constructed in this lower plateau. And of course, there was a lawn area between those two main lots. Um, Having said that, the stormwater facility uh, proposed is being sized um, by the book for what's proposed. It requires 3,900 cubic feet of storage, storm storage uh, that would be infiltrated strictly with an emergency overflow to the state system. Um, we're providing 12,000 cubic feet of storm storage. They're three times what's required. Uh, both for water for the water quality volume in case um, in the future, and we would come back obviously with a site plan amendment if uh, more parking was being proposed by the applicant, we would come back before you. Um, but we're sizing that basin for um, those impervious areas should they be needed in the future so that area wouldn't have to be disturbed again. And that was kind of a result of discussion both uh, at the last meeting and with staff. Um, they wanted the water quality basin and treatment to uh, reflect kind of a worst case. So um, that's it. Uh, those are basically the changes. Uh, re removing some blacktop, a lot of blacktop parking that we don't feel, that the applicant and the design team doesn't feel is necessary. Uh, we're proposing 90, I think 93 or 94 spaces presently, um, which we feel is more than ample for the 66 residential units, uh, th th half of which are studios and half are one bedroom. Uh, there's one caretaker's cottage, which the county always, again, had a caretaker there as well, um, in addition. And then, of course, about 6,000 square feet of support space yeah. that may have employees and may have a parking demand and we calculated that at uh, yeah. one, sp one space required for every 300 square feet as per your code, and that's 20 spaces. So we feel that it's more than ample to have one space per resident. Most of them will not have vehicle ownership, um, but there'll be one parking space per resident plus um, about 20 for the office space and about six or eight other for staff and or um, support services, so. Right. Yes, that was discussed at the last meeting, but that's shown the connectivity to the painted crosswalks. Uh, 
Um, it's, a, it's about a four foot deep with tapered side slopes that would have wetland vegetation planted in it. Um, and the water would come in to the basin and infiltrate into the ground. Um, Right, um, the trees that align the property are shown and none are being removed in the, the large catalpa tree. We, we did make it a design change. Somehow that hadn't been located in the prior survey. We went out and located and designed the walkway around that um, just so there'd be no uh, removal needed of that tree or trimming of the tree uh, beyond you know, the bare minimum uh, of normal maintenance, uh, tree maintenance. Scott? That's it. I think the site plan. That, yes. That, that right. was added. With this the handicapped bit accessible of sidewalk. Ramp. It's requiring the installation, you know, the construction of a ramp at the intermediate island. So, you know, there's a walkway, then there's a ramp. No, there's a stair adjacent to it. So, so that provides. Uh, pedestrian flow between the two buildings and between the two levels of the property as well essentially and we've added some other uh, sidewalks on the property in the development zone and we again reduce the development zone to try to keep away from neighbors and also areas where quite frankly Parking, adding parking is not as natural as here where it's pretty much flat and here where it's pretty much flat and along the frontage of the building where it will be a very flat area. So we tried to move it away from slopes and uh, reduce overall site disturbance. So just getting back to very quickly the stormwater, the SWIP, you're going to have a revised SWIP yeah, well, what, Together. Yeah, what to clarify, in February 2017, we submitted a, you know, detailed stormwater analysis on the original site plan, which had that, those extra parking areas. Um, that was reviewed by the city engineer. He had three comments on the report, no comments. He wanted two details added to the plan. One was to put a, a, a snout uh, in the catch, last catch basin before the pond to catch any floatables so they would not get out in the pond and to uh, reduce any uh, side slopes on swales uh, to three or one or greater, horizontal or vertical. Those were the extent of his comments. He, he accepted everything else that was written and presented. He had a few other comments on the site plan having to do with ADA issues, which were also addressed. Um, so. What happens in a project, the SWIP is a construction document, almost like the building plans, that's uh, handled administratively by the community's MS4 officer. So uh, the stormwater report is the basis for the SWIP. The SWIP just has, it's a book, you know, and it has the maintenance requirements, um, both the city's MS4 officer, the design engineer, and the applicant all have to so sign to it and it goes to Albany and is filed, and also gets filed with the city. So that is being finalized based on these plan revisions now, and uh, with, with the caveat that the sizing for the stormwater quality basin and peak flow attenuation basin is, is being kept at a larger size than necessary at the request of the city. Um, but that will look like that pond will be dry except during heavy rains, and it will drain out through the bottom. There's an emergency overflow spillway that would connect to the state system. When Frank Canning Boulevard was built and this intersection redone by the state, what, maybe 30 years ago now, the state put a whole new drainage system down, Flatbush Avenue, then uh, through an easement, dumped it on the back of the county property, and then it drains down into the uh, what was Colony Liquor, and now is Wolf Tech and Stavo, um, and uh, without an easement, but the state did it. Um, so that system, we're just tying in an emergency overflow into that system. Um, 
the Wolf Tech, the drainage issue problems caused by this and some other trib areas down at Wolf Tech were taken care of by the city several years ago with participation with the county and the property owners, uh, putting a basically a new pipeline under the CSX tracks. The old pipeline was not, not functional. So there's no dr way to drain to the west to the state system and Ulster Avenue that goes down Harwood Street in the town of Ulster near McDonald's. So all that was taken care of uh, as part of the Wolf Tech and Stavo industry redevelopment of the Colony Liquor property. Um, don't mean to get too far off track here, but the state does have, uh, the point is the state put in a major drainage system that we will just be, the site is currently tied into, but we will just be tying in emergency overflow. Okay, and um, this question actually is for Scott. I know that at the last meeting, I read through the minutes and listened to the audio tape, and there were questions about the architecture of the new building and its um, approval by historics. And we did have a conversation this morning with CHIPO mm -hmm. representatives, and it's it's not including that building. So it only Shippo only oversees the building that is designated historically, which would be the Alms House itself proper and some of the other outlying structures, not the new structure. And the For the tax credit program, that is correct. However, the Sure. The National Park Service has reviewed the entire site in its entirety, as did Weston Davies at the New York State SHPO office. They don't have authority, but we invited them into the process at the outset, and we looked to Preservation Brief 14 and uh, our historic preservation consultant, Heritage Consulting, um, talking to the folks at the Park Service and New York State, giving us guidance to make sure that we're following all of the, you know, the, the expert and academic uh, guidance that's out there. You know. um, very clearly, the, Nation, the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines st state that a building shall be of its time. So this is um, not a building that was built in 1893, the new building, or 1924. It's a building that's built, will be built in 2018. Um, they emphatically um, offer guidance that, that creating a false narrative or a false sense of history by copying or mimicking a, 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 an earlier time is frowned upon. Well, you know, we, we created some uh, nearly photo real uh, simulations in a 3D model that accurately depict the direction of the architecture. That was in the PowerPoint. Right, that's in the PowerPoint. I brought copies of that here tonight. Um, you know, the building was designed to be a similar scale, the Alms House. Um, it is placed on the site at a lower elevation. Um, it identifies itself as a separate structure altogether. It does not um, give one the impression that it was an addition or part of the, the compound um, at that time. Um, and it's a, it's a campus. You know, the property is a campus. So that what you see are different buildings that were different periods of time for different uses and the architecture is reflective of that. Mm -hmm. um, I can appreciate, um, you know, this debate about style has been going on since the beginning of, of time. You know, the Victorian style and the federal style and the colonial style. And which style is 
more appropriate. Um, but the, the, the Secretary of the Interior doesn't um, publish guidance lightly. You know, they have experts and academics and scholars who offer guide, this type of guidance to professionals like myself. Um, and that's very clear that for us to create a building that was anything but of this time would be wrong. So. Mike, do you want to add anything to the conversation? No, I mean, uh, I mean, from my perspective, I won't get into the style. That's that's uh, the board and and uh, and Scott's purview. But um, as far as the present designation of the of the building, um, there's no further action administratively that needs to occur other than this board making a vote at some point on site plan and special use permit. So there's no provisions in the zoning law that will require anything further than that. Sure. Yep. So the ground floor is a common community shared space for the residents and then um, commercial space that has yet to be defined in, in terms of who which will be in there, whether it will be Rupco entirely or another tenant. The three upper floors are all um, residential. And then there's a common circulation core that provides clarity from the front entrance to the, what I call the, the rear um, um, plaza or uh, landscaped area for outdoor uh, space for the, the residents. Uh, if you flip to the first floor plan, you'll see that from the main entrance, there's transparency through to, uh, to that rear space. It's a large community room. The elevation is broken up in an attempt to give it a, um, a more residential scale. If you look, they're not numbered. So if you look at, at either of the long elevations, we've broken the facade into smaller elements, not unlike in a, a townhouse situation where there are multiple buildings next to one another, a row house situation. Um, we further broke the second floor, thir second third floor from the fourth floor to break down the volume as well with a material change there. What are those materials that are being proposed? Like I see dark gray, light gray, obviously glass is glass, but then is this a masonry brick building? Is this a stucco it is, it is not a brick building. It is not a stucco building. It will be some type of exterior um, rain screen material, and there are a, a variety of them out there. Um, Nichi Ha is one, um, where you get a smaller, um, smaller, more human scale to the materials. Uh, if you look, for instance, at the back of the lace mills, we've got uh, on the studio edition, there's a, um, a metal shingle sort of like you see on the cupolas around Kingston on the industrial buildings. So which brand that in is has yet to be determined, but it will not be vinyl, it won't be stucco, and it's not brick. Well, there are a number of, of brand names for those materials. They're, they are all exterior cladding. Um, there are um, Hardy Board, for instance, Nietzsche Ha. Um, there are half a dozen of them out there, and we just are not at that point yet. Is 
durable materials, um, no vinyl, not EFIS. Um, these are the colors that are proposed for the building. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the idea here for the seniors, and if you look at, um, at projects in the architectural magazines, award-winning projects these days, is to, is to identify light, um, the, 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 a spirited response, you know, to this is a contemporary building, this is light-filled, it's the reason for all the glass at the, the common areas. You know, the days of um, institutional housing projects are a thing of the, the past. So this is symbolizing that, um, that transparency. You know, studies have been done that show that, that if you bring people out of their, particularly with seniors, you bring them out of their apartments, bring them together with natural light, um, they'll re respond better, they'll, they'll be healthier. I mean, that's, that's one of the guiding principles of this project. You see in the landscaping plan that there are raised beds for, for growing. There's a large communal um, kitchen in there for teaching and you know, food educators that will come in, that, that RUPCO runs these types of programs for their staff um, today, teaching people how to live healthy lifestyles, how to, how to um, cook their own food, um, rather than buying it from a convenience store, um, to congregate with their neighbors, to socialize, um, not to be sequestered in their, uh, their apartments. And so that's why some of the architecture is reflective of that. Um, not only does it need to be a contemporary building and want to be a contemporary building, but um, we want to have that transparency um, and the access blurring the lines between the inside of the building and the outside of the building uh, to appreciate the landscaping and the, you know, the, the strong um, gesture that we're making, encouraging people to interact with one another. Scott, one of the questions, you, just, you brought it up, uh, landscaping. One of the comments from the County Planning Board was to have a, a finalized landscape plan. Has that been is that within this package here or well assuming that the board is in agreement with the actualization of this plan that was discussed last month I think everyone seemed to be conceptually in agreement we asked Dennis to go back and make that a hard line drawing if there's consensus that we've done as we discussed then we'll have the landscape architect okay. update her plan. She's already on notice. She has the, the revised backgrounds, but we wanted to get through this meeting. Okay. So, Good. Um, it wouldn't be a change to the, the palette. Um, it would just be more a matter of moving 24 of these from here to here and responding to the, the changes, the reduction in parking. We have now, as a result of last month's meeting, revised all nine of our drawings, but have not formally submitted them. It would be Correct. formally submitted for your consideration in July, but this is essentially it. Um, okay. That's, a, that's without the, uh, all, the stormwater, all the stormwater detail and uh, notes on it, but this, this is a, just a little cleaner drawing of the same thing, which is just basic site layout. Mm -hmm. Goals were to you know reduce site impacts, reduce pavement, unnecessary pavement, and add, add more pedestrian um, access and walkways through the site. We did not remove the landscaped areas, especially the big garden area between Route 9W and the proposed new building. It's going to be just magnificent. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll remind everyone that the landscape architect that we're using here is the same uh, landscape architect that we used at the lace mills, and anyone that drives by there, I think, will appreciate her uh, her skill. Drought tolerant, um, urban native plantings, and everything's thriving there. Um, so it's doing well. Kevin, do you have anything to add to the discussion this evening? Okay. <clears throat> I believe that's what they're looking for this evening, and then it will be carried to July. So they're looking for direction from the board. So if the board agrees in concept, I'll ask the members to, to speak to it. Um, if you're in concurrence, then they can move forward and prepare that final set of plans to bring to the board in July. And that's something you can bring to us right for that next meeting, the, the, the type of materials that we're going to look at for the, what we're using on the building, right? Is yeah, that something if, that if was, you want me to bring a sample, I didn't to be to, to yeah. know that we were going to get to that level of well, I, on. Yeah, as long as, I mean, we, we also have to, I know, we want to submit um, the revised stormwater plan for the, for the, the, for the reduced parking. I want to send that off to Ralph as well. I know that the SWIP has already been approved for. Or, 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 it hasn't. The SWIP. Okay. The SWIP is yeah. a document that will go to Ralph okay. in the next uh, week or so. Yeah, so he still has to weigh in on it. Because he's a short timer now, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we're going to be, we're not going to do anything this month with approvals no, or not, but. I just think we need to talk about it so they can get me in. Yeah. They want to come back next month, there's still a lot of Yes. So, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some conditions are obviously we need consent of the city water department and where she wants the meters and valves. I mean, we have a water yeah. supply plan basically working off the existing system that serves the complex now. Uh, approval of DPW of the off site work with respect to the sanitary sewer, those kind of conditions. Usually, the SWIP, final SWIP NOI is uh, filing with the state as a condition. I don't know where, uh, obviously a bond for the site improvements is a condition, value of the site right. improvements. I was, I was going to mention that one too. <laughs> Sorry, so I was just stipulating that, I mean, normally we would expect four or five conditions at least on having to do with the site plan. Administrative permits, DPW, city water department, MS4 officer sign off for the SWIP, filing of the notice of intent with the state. Uh, a bond for the site improvements and the city engineer agreeing to the you know, cost of the site work so that it can be secured uh, with a bond or letter of credit and uh, whatever else you, the planning staff and planning board deem as reasonable conditions um, we're, we're here to discuss to try to get get resolved tonight as far as what conditions can carry as conditions of the site plan approval. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask the board members if you have anything specific that you feel is missing, absent, or should be modified on these drawings as has been presented. 
um, obviously they have some additional detail work to complete. The materials. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Well, Rob, I'm going to ask you to speak into the microphone. I'm sorry. I think conceptually, you know, I, I mean, I know there's been discussion amongst the board, and and people go back and forth, old versus new. Um, I I like the building. I understand the difference. I understand the parks comments and and the academia mm -hmm. behind it. Um, you know, I put a lot of thought into it. I thought about college campuses. You have old buildings, new buildings. They, they blend, they go together. Um, I just would like to know exactly you know, what materials, because we've had projects in the past that we think it's going to look one way, but all of a sudden it ends up a little bit different. And a lot of the previous projects Repco's had, similar to the Alms House, it's in a pre-existing brick building. We know we're going to get a brick building when we're done. So I kind of would like to know some of the detail on this, but the board's got to, the other members have to chime in and no, you know, figure out whether this is the, the this is the the concept that we're moving forward here with uh, I'm going to propose that I'll submit a wall section that lists those materials for you the reason sort of hedging on whether it's Nietzsche ha or Hardy obviously is it, we're not at that point yet but I can describe the material to you, it's a dur durable, cementitious type of exterior cladding. There are dozens of them on the market. I don't care who you use, I'm just looking at the gray. It looks okay, it's hardy board up above, it's silver and shiny. I mean, is it metal? What, it's, it's hard for me to tell. So sure. Board, I'd like to just see, like, you know, this is generally the type of product that we're using, so we understand when we look at these different colors and reflections, this is what you're going to get. I think everybody's in agreement with that, right? I'll submit an updated wall section that calls out all those materials then. I think that's a good idea. I mean, when I agree with Dennis, his first comment was that the workshop that we, you know, the quote unquote workshop we had at the beginning of, of their presentation last meeting, I think went, went quite, a, quite a ways to where we are right now. You know, the walkability of the site, moving around the parking, and then I know we had a question about, um, you know, how the building's gonna look. And, uh, you know, sometimes as, as uh, pr projects, um, I don't wanna say drag on, but, you know, there's a lengthy, this is a lengthy process, and aspects that were discussed early on in the whole process sometimes get forgotten at the end the end so I think that Kevin your you know your your concerns about uh, how the thing looks is I mean is, uh, here we are today we're discussing bringing materials in to see exactly what it is so I think that you know having those types of type of uh, materials present will give will will satisfy the board at least for me anyway I know Rob will too as, as yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean just looking at this generally I'm concerned I like to know what the glass I mean is this you know blue green how does it reflect? Because obviously residents are going to be looking at it. Um, the, the windows, what kind of windows on the second floor? They look different than the third floor. The third floor windows reflective, non-reflective. Just, you know, what is, how does this go all going to fit together so people know, you know, what to expect? Okay. Scott had said he's going to bring in yeah. okay. an updated plan. And okay. he just wants the direction that we're fine with that. Okay. And we would, I think we would need, we would need to have a vote, not tonight, but at, at that time of, of approval, if there were, were to be an approval on the waiver for the parking, too, so that. Okay. Right, and we just, we just received, thank you, Scott, for giving us the updated mm -hmm. counts on the units, so. We're going to recalculate those and look at the plans again and determine what actually a waiver would mean. Mm -hmm. And I just when we do that, um, I think that we should recognize that the applicant was from the outset prepared and demonstrated that they could satisfy the zoning ordinance, that everyone 
thinks that this is a better plan for all the reasons that we've discussed. So. Right, and I, I, and I know that's been discussed about having areas that potentially are held in quote unquote reserve right. um, for future. They should. Not. No. Um, well, I mean, we'd, we'd have to come think, back for a site plan review at a future date. We don't think we'll be coming back, but just let the record reflect that you know, it's not yeah, a fair. We wanted to situation. show the worst case for Seeker as well, you know, right. both the impacts and, you know, here's what the zoning requirement is. There is a provision in your zoning code that significantly reduces the number of parking spaces for it. 75% of the residents are age 62 and over. And it's right in your code, but but the applicant can't assure you of what the age demographic is going to be other than age 55 and up, whether it's going to be 75% will be over the age 62. Um, they don't know yet. Um, might be 95% or over the age 62, but it might be 65%. So, But you, know, you do have that provision in your zoning that mm -hmm. significantly reduces the parking calculation based on that population, um, that age demographic, excuse me. So the marching orders are pretty clear. I mean, we will just need some materials and um, any issues that have to be resolved in between now and then. You can talk it over with Sue and, and have a, a something. Does the rest of the board, I mean, that's just me. How does the rest of the board feel with this? With, with, Mr. Chairman, there's also a, there's a set of provisions or set of requirements in the special use criteria and in the site plan criteria, which we provided an analysis of in a submittal um, for the last previous meeting. And I think probably Sue, when she drafts her decision, will probably you know be working with that too and using what parts of it she feels are should be used and what and what not but it goes through each of the elements too which um well, i'm sure i do get into some of the things that rob actually is is bringing up that's so i'm sure that'll be a lengthy document that i have to read so <laughs> yeah all right um does anybody else have any questions now with the other side here all right so we can uh thank you all right thank you yeah um, at this time, I will. What item number is At this time, I'll make a motion that we table item nine for a period of uh, until the next meeting, the next regular meeting. I have a second by Robert Jacobson. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Okay. Um, do you want these back that we're not using right now? Do you? I mean, you're welcome to keep them, but if all right, you know, I'll, you're going to shred them, I'll bring them back. No, well, I, I mean, I may need them just back at the next, you know, if that's, sure. that's fine. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.